Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm going to be um, talking about a very sensitive um, subject today. Um, we all know how um, a lot of people who have overstayed how that has happened and we could argue that the government is at fault because at the very beginning they weren't clear with regard to the immigration rules sharing the information so people knew so that people who were here you know just continued as normal um, we can argue that they lost the boarding passes which would have proved a lot of people who were here and did therefore didn't have to prove where they were but there's a much more serious and underlying problem with regard to the Windrush generation and even who tend to be in the 50s and the 80s and that is the question of illiteracy. A lot of men in particular more than women failed school in, in the West Indies when they came over here they were too young and when they, when they had to join the UK system they felt embarrassed. I mean, Jamaican people tend to have a lot of pride. They, they felt embarrassed, so they didn't get into the, a lot of them. There, of course, there's always exceptions, but there are those that didn't um, get stuck in with the UK educational system and so remained illiterate. And you, when you see grown men around, you may not think that they cannot read or write it just wouldn't dawn on you because there's this bravado, they know stuff, they can interact with you. There is nothing visibly wrong. You cannot tell. They're usually clued up by reading the news, by listening to documentaries. they normally very, very good listeners. And if they need anything done, then ask somebody to do it for them. But what happens in a situation like when they are held by the police, when they are detained in custody and this immigration situation where they are then left to their own devices under the observation of officials. Those officials are not even going to think about the question of illiteracy. You see, when you, when you deal with men or women who are illiterate, they tend to be very aggressive. They tend to come over as knowing it all. You know, they're very, they have a lot of bravado. And so the police are not going to equate somebody who is like that with not knowing how to do the online forms, who, who not going to know how to complete the forms. And as far as they're concerned, they're hiding something. And that's going to land them in a lot of problems. I mean, how can a grown man tell the policeman, I don't know how to read that. I don't know how to write that. I don't know how to explain myself in writing. I can tell you my situation and I can tell it to you very clearly. And I have all the evidence supporting my situation. But for me to write that down in a statement, or to fill up one of your forms, I can't do it. So should the government show compassion to people in this situation and people in this era? Because I am sure that is why a lot of people in the Windrush generation got deported. I am sure it's the reason why a lot of them cannot appeal. I'm sure it's the reason why a lot of them have got lost under the radar now that they've been deported and they are not engaging with people over here to let us know what's going on. These people are vulnerable. And yes, you could argue, oh, well, they should go to school. Oh, well, there's no excuse for ignorance because they can learn anything on YouTube, anything by Google. And the thing is, they can learn by Google. They can learn everything by YouTube. That's fine. But what happens when they are confined in an area where under observation they're asked to write something or asked to complete a form and they don't know how to do it because they've been relying on other people to do it and YouTube and Google doesn't teach you that it doesn't teach you how to write in that way 
not to the extent that is expected in those kind of officious situations. So I don't know whether, I don't know how, um, I believe that number one, the government should be aware of this situation and so therefore show some compassion and have some understanding and not see it with, not view it with skepticism and suspicion. You know, if somebody like that, I mean, you know, it's hard because I used to know somebody who was dyslexic and I used to think, bloody hell, they don't, he doesn't know how to do this and he doesn't know how to do that. And, but, and I started, I think it was something that he did and I decided to read up on dyslexia. And so I understood why he came over as clumsy in certain things and why he was unable to communicate in a certain way. But once I knew I was able to say to him, look, are you dyslexic? And he admitted that he was. But the point is, is that how many are, how many men, when they're in the company of other men, are going to own up to that? They might own up to it to their female friends or they might not even own it up to them because they might feel embarrassed. But that is why they behave the way they do to, to kind of distance any kind of criticism or judgment. And that is the problem because of that West Indian or African pride. They're afraid to to, they're afraid to admit something like that. So if a police officer says, look, complete this form, and they say, look, I'm not completing it, rather than say, look, um, officer, I'm, you know, play, play it low, be humble, and say, officer, you know, I don't know how to complete the form. I don't know how to write, and I don't know how to read. Because when they give you a form to read, and that is what they do, and they ask you to sign it, and then you're being, they'll see it as being obstructive if that individual is not signing that form or who doesn't want to read the form, you know, or who's asking for somebody else. They're going to look on that as collusion. They're not going to look on it as something as simple as somebody not being able to read and write. So all I'm saying is that should the government show compassion to people like this? Would you have compassion to somebody who's in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and if they're still alive, 90s, who for the, probably through their own fault have not accessed the education system and who were wayward when they were young and that whatever. But whatever the reason is, would you have compassion over someone like that? Do you think the government should have compassion? with somebody like that? What kind of things do you think should be put in place for people who are in this situation and who have been made vulnerable through the immigration process because of their lack of, um, because of their illiteracy? Anyway, that's all I've got to say. I thought I'd put it out there. As you know, I kind of go where others fear to tread. And that's all for now. Bye bye.